We are live. So just wanted to welcome everyone. Uh, my name is Yolanda Shed Osagade. I believe we have Tamer is on the other side of the chat here with OTC that has welcomed me here today. Thanks for everyone that is tuning in and coming in. So as I was saying, my name is Yolanda, but welcome to how brands and creators can effectively work together on travel recovery campaigns. So as you know, we're in a pre unprecedented time. The state of the industry, as you've been attending many sessions at OTC Live, uh, you can tell that this is the topic that everyone is talking about, not this particular topic, but in terms of how do we recover the travel industry? So as a um, content creator myself, and one who has been working in the industry as well as an influencer marketing expert. So I've worked with brands, uh, influencer marketing agencies, um, all the way to big brands like Coca-Cola, Lonely Planet, Etihad Airways, and the list goes on and on in lots of different destinations as well. So some of this is on a content basis, meaning they might contract me to work on content campaigns with my husband. Other times it is actually to come in and to look over their influencer marketing practices. I'm creating a specific content to help them communicate their messages better to the influencers that they're actually working with. So we get to see both sides of the house working in this industry. And what's great about this industry is that even with this particular crisis that is happening right now, um, there is a unique opportunity for brands and creators to work together, hence the campaign, or excuse me, hence the topic of the session. So in terms of social media consumption, it is so important to look at what, what that looks like today. So as you know, the, the average screen time has actually increased you know, up to five hours and 40 minutes per day. This is according to Thor. And they're in a leading influencer marketing agency and platform. And I mean, this is an 18% increase. So this is quite high. Um, as we know, people are staying at home and they're on lockdown. Uh, of course, they're gonna be going to their devices. They're going to be downloading apps like TikTok, which is currently one of the top downloaded apps on both Google Play as well as uh, the App Store. So, and then you look at places like YouTube. So YouTube consumption has increased by 75%. So there's a demand for content on YouTube and news from authoritative, uh, authoritative voices, meaning that this is not just mainstream news. So consumers want something more. They also want non-mainstream news. They want to, as we will talk about later, they want to be entertained. They want to be taught things. They actually want to be uplifted during this time. So YouTube being a really great place to get that type of content. And then the next platform in terms of Instagram and Facebook, they've seen a 40% increase. And this is you know, the whole Facebook ecosystem, meaning we're seeing WhatsApp, we're seeing Facebook, and we're seeing Instagram with a appetite for live broadcast. So this is really, really important to also consider. And not lastly, because there's many other social media platforms, but one that is actually quite important to the ecosystem of social media is Twitter. And they've seen their monetizable daily active user rate jump up 23% to 164 million. And that's you know within this first quarter of the year. So, I mean, what does that really then mean? It, like I said before, it means that creators and brands have a really unique opportunity to work together. And it's, I, one thing that I noticed at the very beginning of the crisis that we saw brands that were just automatically pausing campaigns because one, creators cannot travel. Um, journalists cannot travel. So then what's the point of you know spending this money? But if the money is already uh, siphoned off, it, it might be really it might be really smart to start to look at how those funds could be used in a different way. So hence the the term recovery campaigns. So these are crucial talking points that we'll be addressing addressing. So the appropriate tone in current travel messaging, uh, all the way to approaching campaign during the era of social distancing. And lastly, we'll talk about how to elevate local voices in travel recovery campaigns. 
So what are ways that brands and creators can be tonally appropriate in the current travel messaging that we're seeing? And getting tone right is so important. If you're not considering tone, you are you ha- you actually are at risk of completely alienating your audience. And it's the same thing from the brand perspective as well as from the creator perspective. So if you are if your messaging is not right, it takes a long time to get back to that middle ground and then hopefully to a more positive ground. So nailing that in the beginning is is extremely important. So one thing that we can look at in terms of current messaging is that really we should look at these three verticals of messaging. Content and messaging should be informative. It should be and educational. Okay. It should also inspire, inspire audiences to, to think beyond, you know, the current circumstances. And lastly, it should simply entertain. I read a stat earlier that said on YouTube that I believe it's like 38% of people are going to YouTube for comedy, specifically for comedy. They just want to be uplifted. And this is a major increase. And this was, I believe, 69% of respondents had um, actually responded to this particular poll. So, and this was a study that was led um, by four, I believe. So again, there is an appetite for content that you know, does all of these three things, informs and educates, inspires, as well as entertains. So what about brands? You know, which brands? What are, who's doing it right? And these are just a few. It's a snapshot of many different brands who are doing it right. And I thought it was important to start off um, pointing out to an airline that is really trying to produce informative content. So if you've seen some of the content that Emirates have put across, Um, They've done this really incredible campaign and PSA through cinematic storytelling through a um, a video campaign that is produced across many different um, social media platforms. So they've been putting out this messaging that really seeks to inform viewers about their new sanitization procedures, um, the type of testing they'll be doing, um, rapid testing in... um, and anyone that's flying the airlines all the way down to how flight attendants are actually going to be dressed in a type of um, PPE, so on and so forth. The, t- the type of food and the packaging that they're going to be serving people, um, wearing gloves, so many different things. And it's very clear, but it's not put across in a very clinical way. So we're not going to be playing any videos during the presentation, but I definitely encourage you to go and take a look at it. Um, also, visit Estonia. So they had a really interesting campaign, and this was to the response to the the European, or excuse me, the European response to COVID-19. And they kicked it off with this campaign about staying home and staying safe. However, they jumped on a trending hashtag, which is a really great um, strategy as well, about, and it was like, stay the F home. And the, um, the, the responses to this were really, really incredible. And I wish I had time to show you screenshots of that. So you, you saw people that were just like, you know what? Estonia is on my travel wish list and I cannot wait to travel there after COVID. So uh, lastly, and in terms of some brands of just one of many who are doing it right is Discover Puerto Rico. Now, Discover Puerto Rico has done a great job of hitting all three different um, verticals. Um, they've been informative, they've been inspiring, and they've been entertaining. They're showing that they really do know their audience and their audience really wants to be entertained and they want to be inspired to travel to the destination and they also want to be informed. So they're showing that they have, you know, that this way of connecting with their audience by hosting all these different classes. They're doing salsa classes, um, mixology classes, drumming classes, cooking classes with local experts, really amplifying the local voice. And we'll be discussing that a little more later on in terms of amplification of, you know, the local voice in different destinations. So in terms of creators, what are creators doing right now? Ones that are really nailing it and getting it right. Um, one creator, Gabby Beckford, with uh, her screen name is Pax Light. She's taking the time now that she's gone full time into travel influencing and being a content creator. Well, it, it it's interesting because she chose kind of this really rough time to, to make that transition. She started, um, I think, I believe at the end of February and then COVID-19 happens, you know, within the U.S. So she had to do some pivots 
And she started sharing really informative resources with her audience. And they've been really um, responding to this. But yet, she's still also really promoting a really positive travel narrative as well by doing collaborations with other creators, so on and so forth. Um, as well as Scott Can Eat. So Scott is a really uh, incredible and prolific um, food content creator. So he's been sharing this inspiring food culture content that really kind of whets the appetite for, for traveling as well as for the food. And lastly, uh, Caroline Sande with Travel Eat Slay, she's been doing these really incredible uh, Instagram story takeovers where she's featuring locals in the destination. And not only have they been informative, but they've been inspiring and they've been entertaining because they're able to really step into the destination. They're talking about, um, you know, the state of the particular destination that they're in. So from Cape Town to Cuba to Ghana, you know, all over the place that she's exploring. But it's a really great approach un and unique approach to content and being able to uh, also kind of amplify the voice of locals, as well as really making sure that you're connecting with the needs of your audience. So uh, I thought this was a really great quote to share from Curry McKinsey, who's an aviation industry writer. And he talked about how important it is that brands, um, airlines, airports, hotels, they reach out to content creators to help them communicate the new procedures that are going to be happening and coming down the pipeline. Um, he talks about giving creators the, um, the opportunity to experience you know, this behind the scenes look at what the future of travel will look like. And I love this part. He says, we're equipped to easily understand and communicate this information as our readers know and they, they trust us. So, you know, from the creator standpoint, as someone who also works with brands, I thought this was a really great thing to highlight and to look at. So moving on to the second point is how do we approach campaign development in the era of social dis distancing? <laughs> so lots of things to think about there is this is where tone comes into point or to, to play, as well as research and many other things. So one brand that we can also look at is Traverse Events. So Traverse does influencer management. They also are an events company in the UK and they host events worldwide and they work with destination marketing brands as well as other content creator um, brands that um, work to provide resources to creators. So one thing that the leadership behind Traverse did was they reached out to all of the creators that went on a recent press trip this just in 2019, as well as the previous year, 2018. And they asked them to not just reshare content, but share their stories of the destination and, and just, you know, positive take on uh, their travels to Antigua. So it, one thing that the brand, or excuse me, the destination loved was the fact that these these stories are just not that we're just being reshared at you know a year post travel or two years post travel was that they were so honest and and really real so this has been a very positive response there was no payment involved between um, Antigua the tourist board and Traverse you know very transparent about that but um, what it, it also is doing is it's also ensuring that their uh, Traverse is really marketing themselves as a brand advocate to Antigua and be sure that that particular relationship will continue to work and, and even amplify and grow in the future. So what should brands be doing really? So one place to start with is to shortlist creators. And this is not just thinking about numbers. Like, okay, sometimes from the brand perspective, it's about um, numbers. Like, you know, I should be working with in influencers and creators that have the largest numbers. And although sometimes numbers do, uh, do you know, they do tell their own story, um, numbers are often a vanity metric. And so it's so important to start looking at the quality and the voice behind the platform. So really looking at creators who maybe you've worked with before or who've traveled, maybe someone who you haven't worked with before, and they've but they've traveled to your destination and you stumbled across them on social media. Or perhaps there's someone, this is not just destination-based, it could be product, it could be services as well, tour operators. Um, you also want to consider creators who have just a desire to become a brand um, or destination advocate. 
So I think that's really important when you're looking at reaching out to creators, that you're looking at their tone of voice. They should be an extension of your brand. So meaning that if you were to look at the content that you've already shared, and then you look at their content, that it just seamlessly fits in. So another thing to look at is, you know, or excuse me, another thing to discuss are key objectives. So you, you need to be, from the brand perspective, be creative and open to ideas from the creators that you might be working with because they know their audience the best. You know, if, if you have a specific um, idea in mind, share it, but also ask them, you know, what are their thoughts? Do they have any other ideas to bring to the table? Uh, also, you know, clarify your content distribution system. And this is where I point out Discover Puerto Rico. So they've done such an incredible job of repurposing their content. So um, as I said in the caption here, it's, you know, amplify all produced content through repurposing. And Discover Puerto Rico has done a great job at that. So they've taken live broadcast um, through people being able to connect through Zoom like we're doing here today. They've republished those onto a playlist on YouTube. They've created a Spotify music list so that you can play to your heart's desire when you're making cocktails or used to practice your salsa lessons. Um, and they've also then repurposed that through uh, audio and they've used it on IGTV, so on and so forth. The best way to do this is to actually create a content ecosystem flowchart and just decide you know, where and when this content is going to be distributed. Um, and be really clear about that to the creator and make sure that, you know, all the proper crediting is done as well. And, you know, lastly, but um, not only, you know, have a documented creator agreement. Uh, agreements should be transparent. They should be sustainable and beneficial for both parties. So in this time where, you know, budgets are being siphoned off, it, it might be the case where you don't have the operating budget right now to um, compensate a creator for a particular campaign. So maybe you're negotiating with them and you're talking about, okay, you know, we, we can't do that now, but maybe we can look at the, um, the first quarter of 2021 and we have like an outstanding you know, invoice then. Or if this is done on an exchange basis, maybe it's a, um, a, a type of situation where you're like, okay, as soon as travel is cleared, you know, we're going to be organizing a trip so that then we tie this all into the messaging that you've done so far in the campaign that you're, that you're going to be working on for us. And then we can do this really incredible story narrative of, you know, during COVID, you know, in a sense, traveling from home to the destination to actually being able to travel to the destination in person. And imagine you know, being able to really um, amplify that narrative in a way that really connects with audience members. And so they're coming back and they're tuning in for more. And, uh, you know, one thing I said, you know, just discuss all of those future incentives and payment and make sure it's really clear upfront. So for those who are creators um, tuning in and also brands, you should also know what, how creators are working and vice versa, creators knowing how brands work and see creators is you know, storyboard your campaigns. And this is a tool, that, um, something that um, myself and my husband have really begun using is, you know, we've prepping campaign ideas before reaching out to brands and we highlight the imagery that fits in with the current appetite of consumers. You know, we, another thing we encourage creators to do is to think outside of the box, um, research the brand and to source local collabs. It is so, 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 so important to start to work with locals in the destination. So how do we elevate local voices in travel recovery campaigns? And these points are going to be very quick. Um, a great brand to look at is the Grenada Tourism Authority, and they're doing a current campaign called Grenada Dreaming. Now, my husband has worked with um, GTA, and he's traveled to Grenada last year and will be repurposing, repurposing content, which is great. But... Uh, Grenada is saying, you know what, we want to work with locals. We want to amplify that local voice to help us tell the story of the destination. And they find that that is extremely important. So definitely give a look to Grenada um, for, you know, current messaging. And here's the thing is that locals sharing their expertise and stories should be an integral part of any campaign that you launch. So, so important. This is not the season to be quiet. This is the season to communicate. 
So be really clear in your objectives, communicate them very clearly, and just make sure that that uh, narrative of communication is going on from the brand side and from the creator side. Oh, it's extremely important. Um, right now, people do not want to hear a clinical response. Um, people don't. Also, the consumers are really not looking to be told like what to do with their money. Um, you know, the trust has already, um, in a sense, been threatened. And so it's so important right now that that human voice is, is really communicated. Um, I, the emails that I'm opening from airlines right now are, you know, when, whenever you see um, founders uh, and they're, they're just talking and being very, very transparent, um, they're, you know, they're, they're just talking in their own voice. It doesn't sound like it's a, um, an overly worded um, response from a PR agency, which, of course, there's always the PR agency that goes over everything, I'm sure. But um, it's just going to be important to have that human voice you know, behind the scenes. And so amplifying the voices of also, um, you know, workers, frontline workers, my mother works for um, United Airlines. So, you know, she's always talking to me about how things are going. Well, amplify the voices of, of those that are working at the brand who are on the front lines right now and putting themselves at risk. You know, people want to hear these stories. So I think it's extremely important to um, provide that human interaction. Um, okay, right now, it is too early right now um, to make that call. I think as, you know, a discerning destination, it's you just have to keep your ear to the ground and really be paying attention to, you know, what is the government saying about, you know, these inter-country agreements between travel. So I know that it's really hard when you're trying to plan your marketing budget for the future. But right now, things are just kind of have to kind of be in the meantime. You have to kind of wait and, and see. I think it's not good to try to, you know, exclude anyone. Honestly, um, I think that goes against this type of global economy that we're trying to build, especially within travel. So, I mean, of course, there will be things in the future. I think as we see different countries having agreements with each other, other places are going to open up sooner than others. Some will have agreements. I, it's just going to be about keeping your ear to the ground. Thanks, everyone. Really appreciate it.